2022 was a year of a roller coaster ride for Indian equity markets. Geopolitical crisis, heightened inflation, and policy tightening pretty much dominated the sentiment for 2022. But which are the factors which are going to weigh down or need to be watched out for in 2023? Expectations from union budget, direction of the market. Let's know all of it. Hi there, I'm Nikki Mirchandani and in conversation with the CEO of $5 billion company, Ashish Sumaya, who is the CEO of White Oak Capital Management. Hi Ashish, Happy New Year from the entire money control tree. I'm going to start off by asking you about your assessment on the markets for 2023, given that we've seen quite some uh, volatility playing out for the markets in 2022. Even as we speak about that, India is still the fifth largest market in the world in terms of the market capitalization. But what's your assessment on the same? Yeah, Nikki, I think, you know, uh, 2022 was, uh, uh, like you said in your opening remarks, quite a roller coaster. Uh, uh, you know, geopolitics, the concern on US economy, Europe as a uh, collateral to what is happening in Ukraine, uh, and then, you know, off late China. I think multiple things have kind of troubled the markets uh, also because of the war and because of geopolitics quite a strong uh, you know sector rotation in markets uh, while nifty has been making new highs you can clearly see uh, that people's portfolios uh, are not necessarily uh, making new highs so i think that uh, you know it's been a challenging year and frankly if you look at it as we end 2022 unfortunately uh, all the issues that have been afflicting the market in 2022 one can't say that they are clearly uh, behind us so when you ask me about 2023 i have to say that at least in the early part of 2023 i'm expecting you know kind of more of the same uh, but eventually maybe somewhere in the first quarter or in the first three to six months you will see some of these issues come to a head maybe we get a leg down hopefully the market digests it and then maybe we can bounce forward. Uh, but till, uh, but in the near future or the foreseeable future or maybe the first half of 2023, I think it's going to be more of the same, unfortunately. And most of the factors, if you could just list out a couple of factors that you think would influence the market trend going forward in this year. Yeah, so, you know, I think, uh, see, as far as, uh, as, far as uh, you know, the war in Ukraine is concerned or uh, you know, the challenges related to a slowdown in Europe. Uh, if you see, for example, uh, you know, how bad is the uh, COVID related uh, relapse in China? Does it spread to any other uh, part of the world? Uh, how fast does the uh, Chinese economy bounce back? And most importantly, out of all of this, if you see as far as US is concerned, uh, clearly uh, they are raising rates into still an economy which is actually strengthening. Uh, maybe some early signs of let up as far as their real estate sector is concerned. But if you see stuff like an unemployment and if you see the actual, you know, uh, GDP growth trends or the demand trends, uh, there doesn't seem to be much of a let up. So I think that, you know, just like 2022, we have been dancing to the tunes of the uh, external uh, markets. If you see for most of 2022, our economic performance and corporate performance hasn't seen much of a markdown. We've been doing fine. But if you see the stock markets, obviously stock markets are correlated to the external uh, world. And uh, for much of 2022, we have been correlated or dancing to the tunes of the external world. It's just that our local conditions are good. So maybe we outperformed or when we had a correction, probably we bounced back. Uh, but I think that till the time, uh, we don't have clarity on how much, uh, you know, where the US economy is going. Uh, when does their monetary policy effectively change stance? Till those things are not clear, uh, we will see this uh, kind of yo-yoing up and down. Uh, and we will see that every time the market outside uh, makes a dive, uh, we also will, uh, you know, correct in correlation to those markets. Sure. Uh, you know, Ashish, there's some amount of resilience that has clearly come through, right? Even if we have been dancing to the trees, mm -hmm. but also at the same time, if you look at the broader market's performance, We've seen some amount of gains coming in from the mid-cap index, though there has been correction overall um, with the small-cap index, but there is stage resilience. You you expect that to continue maybe in 2023, or you expect markets to succumb more to selling pressure now? What are your targets on the markets right now? So I think a couple of things, you know, I mean, uh, if you see the fag end of December 2022, we've again seen Nifty uh, correct by maybe 4-5% uh, from its peak. But, you know, we did a very interesting analysis uh, where we compared 
uh, that if you if you compare say october 2021 peak of nifty uh, with november 2022 peak of nifty uh, october 2021 the nifty peak was around 18490 and november 2022 the peak of nifty was closer to 18900 if you compare peak to peak maybe nifty was up by about 4 5% uh, less than just less than 5% but in that same space nifty 500 was negative nifty mid cap was negative and nifty small cap was negative same way if you actually did sectors when the nifty went up uh, you compare it you compare consumer discretionary uh, you compare pharma chemicals and lot of those sectors they were actually down and what contributed to the rise of nifty everything which benefited from the uh, speculative activity around the war you know whether it is oil metal commodities as a result of that public sector enterprises so couple of things to keep in mind uh, that the uh, you know that the new highs for nifty uh, came along with actually poor performance uh, in the broader market and more importantly on your point it came around with a, a significant uh, sector rotation uh, in the markets right the other important thing is as a result of what is happening in china and us uh, there have been severe headwinds uh, for it as a sector whereas in india fundamentals of it companies especially mid cap it companies fundamentals have only strengthened they have actually not uh, deteriorated uh, when we had 20 billion dollar fii selling in fact our data says that about 10 billion of that fii selling was in financial services and 9 billion was in it uh, services and the third thing is that good part of the fii selling in india was only because india is part of global emerging markets but it was not really directed necessarily exclusively at selling uh, india as a market right so i think these are some of the trends partly technical Uh, which have actually caused a correction now on your question that what are we expecting going forward and also about resilience yes there was resilience in domestic flows uh, throughout the year but as we exit 2022 uh, i can tell you that retail mutual fund industry or the equity mutual fund industry uh, is actually seeing some amount of let up as far as confidence is concerned so the sip related flows are continuing but the non sip flows have declined uh, quite significantly right Uh, and it's over a year that people have practically made no returns so when people make no returns uh, their confidence kind of starts to uh, you know flag down so in 2023 that is why i said uh, that you know in the early part of the year i think we will see more of 2022 reflecting all over again maybe some ups and downs but not much gains to be made later half of 2023 you know i think hopefully first half of 2023 lot of these issues come to a head maybe we get some correction Uh, market digests all this thing and second half of 2023 might be uh, much better as far as targets are concerned very difficult to put a target uh, i think long term average is 12% compounded on the uh, indices uh, long term average is about 11 12% compounded on the nominal gdp growth so i think some ballpark in any good year uh, if you get low double digit uh, that's a great number if we get a correction in the first half of 2023 maybe you can actually make more and i'm just hoping we uh, you know uh, see through that all right within this first half of the correction period that you are expecting which is going to be the pocket of safety for investors in general do you think they are better off with the uh, you know the broader space or you think large caps will again kind of you know take away most of the traction like they have in this finance in this calendar year i think that the you know i think what has done you know it's always that way that what generally there is a tendency uh, that what has done well in a particular period uh, tends to get extrapolated whereas market has its own mind uh, needless to say so i think sure. if you see last year year and a half it has been like a high beta rally you have seen oil metal commodities psus all of them uh, you know really really uh, moving up Uh, there is one common sensical thing to think that if you if you are worried that large parts of the world is going to go through a slowdown or a recessionary phase then why should oil metal commodities and related to that conglomerates and psus why should they be actually uh, going up so much so i think market will again probably show some kind of sector rotation and the stuff which has underperformed for the last year and a half uh, might be actually the safe haven uh, that you were uh, asking me about and the second thing is that you know if mid and small caps uh, underperform uh, for any measure, measurable uh, period of time uh, then i think that in the long trajectory the mid cap index is the best performing index in the whole market so i think that uh, you know uh, good governance not so much to do with sectors but i think good governance 
uh, and if one were to think about sectors and maybe whatever whatever has underperformed in the last year and year a year year and a half so if you ask me non lending financials consumer discretionary uh, mid cap it i think some of those things uh, might actually outperform as compared to what we have seen in uh, 2022 and uh, you know when you have this kind of movement when nifty goes up uh, with sector rotation uh, speculative movement uh, and underperformance from large, large parts of the market then while one expects nifty to correct one also expects uh, the broad market to outperform uh, nifty so i think 2023 is going to be a different year Uh, like i have said couple of times before i am not very very hopeful about it is the first quarter but maybe the latter part of 2023 you might witness some of these things okay you know i was exactly going to ask you that particular question before you could you know answer it you know which are the themes that you'd like and would you now bend more towards the one which are more domestic oriented themes like fmcg banks and auto as compared to that of cyclical and export oriented I mm. think you've already mentioned that you pretty you are going bullish on the IT sector as a whole, along with the consumer discretionary, right? But which yeah. are the sectors that you please go ahead? No, and I was just going to add non-lending financials to that. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Please, please continue. No, please go ahead. Uh, I mean, I just wanted to chat yeah. about uh, you know which are the themes that you would favor. Yes, so you know, in addition to what you just mentioned, uh, we think uh, we believe that you know a lot of the downdraft uh, in IT, midcap IT, etc., has come purely because of global emerging markets related selling in India. Obviously, when when FPI selling happens, they will sell what they own, and they do own a lot of private sector banks, and they do own a lot of IT and midcap IT. Uh, so obviously, they'll sell what uh, obviously they'll sell what they own the most. And why do they own these the most? Because these are Uh, you know, good growth, generally high governance, uh, low preponderance of promoter holding, uh, much higher free float. Uh, you know, good uh, growth potential in the long term. So I think these things have suffered, uh, maybe partly because of valuations in the past, but also partly because of technical reasons, uh, like you know the selling which came out in 2022. I think some of those things have potential to outperform from here on. And the only thing I was going to add is non-lending financials. I think that when we speak about financials, a lot of focus goes on private sector banks. Or in a year like 2022, it is sometimes PSU banks. But if you ask me a, a, a slightly longer-term perspective, uh, and you know this is also correlates well with the mid-cap uh, space, uh, is basically everything to do with uh, non-lending financials. What I mean is uh, companies related to capital markets, say asset management, wealth management. and the brokers the registrars and transfer agents the exchanges market in market infrastructure i think this whole space has not only grown uh, in the last 2 to 3 years but also set to grow consistently uh, over long periods of time to come uh, going forward so that's just one another thing i would add to what we spoke about themes sure i also wanted to chat about the consensus now that has been building up that fed probably will go slow in terms of the rate hikes for the next calendar year I think most of the earning projections have been taken into consideration. The fact that probably there will be some amount of slower rate hikes coming in. What's your mm-hmm. assessment? Any tinkering on that level? Do you think that will throw off the market in a dizzy and will again be uh, succumbing to some amount of pressure coming in from there? No, I mean, frankly, difficult to forecast. Uh, there have been always, you know, mixed voices uh, coming out. Uh, there was a point in time, you know, when a couple of inflation readings came lower. and the market really really celebrated uh, but you know if i re- uh, you know we all read or refer to similar kind of data but one of the things which i can uh, understand uh, is that till the time there is no visible uh, you know let up you know they are watching stuff like not only inflation but also the employment rate for instance so my sense is that two things to keep in mind uh, one is they'll keep hiking uh, till the time there is no visible let up that is one and second is that as they are hiking they are generally hiking rates into a strengthening economy or into a economy which is performing strongly now the point is that uh, stock markets would react uh, adversely eventually when the economy starts to really do badly uh, uh, if you look at it you know 2007 2008 for instance uh, i am not expecting a similar market movement not to suggest that but if you just draw some parallels or learn from the past uh 2007 and early part of 2008 uh, market didn't do too much in fact their economy was strong and the market kept uh, going up 
but the market went down after their economy really showed signs of trouble uh, so same thing you know right now we are in a we are still in a strengthening cycle and when we are in a strengthening cycle the economy is still doing strongly whereas the real concerns start uh, when the economy actually slows down and there is some collateral damage as far as corporate performance is concerned the only thing this time around which i can see is a saving grace is that if you see the tech or whatever uh, you know the large parts of the us market or even the global market for example they have already corrected heavily uh, much in anticipation of what is likely to uh, happen so you know not really an expert on seeing how far the fed will go uh, but i think there is still some way to go uh, that is what i would uh, imagine and i would say we have not seen the worst as far as us markets or global markets are concerned and i'm not necessarily worried about that when it comes to indian indian economy or indian corporate performance i think that we would continue to outperform but the only thing to keep in mind is that if their markets were to have a leg down then at least in the short term we will get correlated and even we will get a downdraft that is what i am talking about sure uh, shifting focus from um, the global scenario back to the indian equity markets you think the equities are expensive right now they have been trading to a premium as compared to the emerging markets almost 2.4 times standard deviation as compared to historical means you think there is a further room of upside in terms of valuations because valuations have clearly driven the market outperformance for calendar year 2022 what do you think would be the driver for 2023 in that case yeah you know i think that uh, purely if you see from a global investors perspective couple of things to keep in mind uh, first is that india has relatively always been expensive uh, and you rightly said that right now even in that expensiveness we are probably uh, towards an extreme that extreme has not necessarily caused by india's uh, you know outperformance or something crazy happening in india if you see in india there is 15 16% earnings growth and we have been flatlining for over a year and a half almost uh, now correct uh, and our corporate performance and economic performance has not had uh, significant deterioration but on the other hand we are looking rich in relative valuations because if you see you know vast part of global emerging markets and more than 30% of that is china you can see what has happened in taiwan because of china you can see what's happened in brazil because of the changing uh, politics you can see what's happened in turkey of course everybody knows what's happened in russia so vast parts you know almost 40 45% of a global emerging markets basket has been under severe duress in the last year year and a half and all of that is their own local conditions uh, which they have brought upon themselves uh, china has got derated after the political uh, situation you know there was a belief uh, that you know within their uh, political system there is still a method to the madness which is that you know president can have two terms and now obviously they have broken that uh, pattern uh, and you know now there are three terms uh, so there is a belief that uh, it will continue to be uh, an autocracy i think once for all whatever derating had to happen has already happened so my sense is if you were to make relative comparisons india has been expensive will always look expensive uh, there is a premium for uh, democracy there is a premium for free markets uh, there is a premium because state owned enterprises in our indices have the lowest weightage compared to other uh, emerging markets and the fourth thing is that there is a premium because our industrial and economic policies have changed quite uh, significantly so there are many reasons why we have a premium uh, on your question yes in the near term uh, whatever derating had to happen in china and other markets that derating had to happen it's already happened so in the short term on a relative valuation basis you might think that some of those markets would outperform india but i think that is only temporary in nature ultimately in the long period uh, we will perform as per our economic and corporate conditions and that i think one is quite uh, bullish or quite positive uh, whatever concerns that i'm uh, you know expressing are only related to the fact that everything all concerns of 2022 are still alive and ultimately the market needs to digest them at some point where are we seeing the downgrades coming in in 2023 um, and the sure. potential pockets of upgrades for uh, sectors overall so i think you know not many upgrades really if you ask me a headline numbers everybody has been speaking about 15% uh, kind of earnings growth now whatever com- uh, whatever communication or conversations i have been having my sense is that instead of uh, 15 16% it could be uh, low double digits kind of uh, earnings growth 
that one is expecting and on your question of downgrades my sense is that you know uh, say commodities energy utilities uh, those are the kind of spaces which are likely to see uh, downgrades right uh, maybe sectors which are uh, you know uh, for example uh, consumer discretionary while i said that you know couple of years perspective long term bullish uh, but in the near term i think lot of the pent up demand post covid kind of revival i think lot of that is out of the way so there could be a breather uh, there as well right uh, so yeah those are some of the things to watch out for but i really think that i mentioned about say mid cap it for instance and whatever commentary i hear there i don't think uh, you know that there, there are going to be uh, as many downgrades as what the share prices uh, seem to uh, suggest reflecting right now thank you so much for <laughs> taking out the time and happy new year to you again all the excitement and the positive vibes sending out there thank you so much for taking out the time and joining us